Many sharks, from the hammerhead to the whale shark, have diverged from the regular fish body shape, taking on new and bizarre forms that help them specialise into their unique lifestyle. But over 90 million years ago in the Cretaceous period, there was once a species of shark that was the strangest of them all, called Aquila lamna, that was unlike anything swimming today. Aquila lamna had the typical torpedo-shaped body of a shark, but had long wing-like fins, and so it was nicknamed the Eagle Shark. Aquila lamna is known from a remarkably well-preserved fossil that was found in a quarry in the north of Mexico. The fossil was about 1.7 meters long, and its wings were actually slightly wider than this, meaning the creature was the only shark that was wider than it was long. The fossil was discovered almost 10 years ago, but has only very recently been extensively studied. What makes the fossil so remarkable is that the creature's skeleton and body imprint have been incredibly well-preserved which is rare among fossils of prehistoric sharks because their skeletons are made of cartilage. Sharks, rays, sawfish, and chimeras are from a massive group of fish known as the chondrichthys that differ from the bony fish because their skeletons are made almost entirely out of cartilage. This makes them more flexible than other fish and reduces their weight, meaning they can move more efficiently through the water, expending less energy than the bony fish traveling at the same speed. These fish are incredibly ancient, dating back to over 400 million years ago, back before anything lived on land. But when their fossils are unearthed, they rarely consist of more than a few bits and pieces, because their cartilaginous skeleton is considerably less likely to get fossilized than real bone. And the parts of these fish that usually do withstand deep time are the bits that are made out of bone. Ancient sawfish can be identified by their teeth on their rostrum, prehistoric rays have been identified by their barbs, and of course, sharks are usually identified by their teeth. Strangely though, with the Aquila lamna fossil, the reverse is true, and the body is very well preserved, but the teeth haven't been. They could have been dislodged when the individual died, but Aquila lamna had a very wide mouth that in the flesh probably would have looked somewhat like the mouth of a whale shark. So it is likely that they just didn't have teeth, as they weren't big predatory sharks at all, and instead filter-fed on plankton, like whales and modern-day filter-feeding sharks do. The 2021 study concluded that Aquila lamna was a true shark, and specifically that it was a mackerel shark, which is the order of sharks that contains great whites and baskin sharks, and due to how bizarre their body is, have been put in their own family, the Aquila lamnids. But some experts are not convinced. It was classified as a shark because of features on its body, but the problem is that the majority of prehistoric sharks are identified by their teeth, and there are actually entire lineages of prehistoric sharks that are only known from their teeth. Aquila lamna was definitely a chondrichthys because its body was made out of cartilage, but due to the lack of teeth on the fossil, it is difficult to confirm if they were actually sharks. So more fossil discoveries will be needed to find out if it was actually a shark, or maybe it was something else. So Aquila lamna was likely a filter feeder, but this still doesn't explain why it had such an incredibly strange body shape that is unlike anything seen before, even among filter feeding animals. Long and thin fins are usually a sign of living out in the deep sea, as they sacrifice agility for being more efficient over long distances. But some researchers believe that Aquila lamna may have moved differently to other sharks, and actually used its pectoral fins to move it through the water, whereas modern day sharks just use these for stability and use their caudal fins for propulsion. It is thought that it may have flapped its wings through the water, which is a type of movement called dorsal ventral oscillation, which is how stingrays and bat rays swim. Basically, a very similar process to how birds flap its wings, just pushing through the water rather than the air. Rays evolved in the Jurassic about 140 million years ago, and came from normal cartilaginous fish that probably didn't look too different from sharks. They started to develop larger and larger fins on the front of their body, whereas their entire bottom half reduced down to a small tail. And you can still see this on some rays like skates that have a remnant of these hind fins left on their tail. Although it's possible that rays originally evolved this body shape to better hide on the sea floor, it has been found that the way rays swim is more efficient than conventional swimming. The largest animals in the ocean that swim using their pectoral fins are manta rays, which are filter feeders, and so may be a good modern day comparison to what Aquila lamna was like. The only problem with comparing Aquila lamna with rays is they still had a really big tail with caudal fins that looked functional. So maybe it swam with a combination of all of its fins in a way no modern fish does, 
Or maybe it was a transitional species between an animal that swims like a ray and an animal that swims like most other fish. The fossil of Aquila lamna was found on what was the edge of a continental shelf, meaning it most likely lived out in the open ocean, which is common for filter feeding animals and it probably lived a lot like modern day manta rays. It would have shared its habitat with marine reptiles like plesiosaurs and most likely many other large marine reptiles seeing as it was the Cretaceous period. And given the size of Aquila lamna, they were very much at risk of being on the menu for some of these marine reptiles or larger sharks. However, they may have grown to larger sizes. There are other prehistoric cartilaginous fish like Creta manta and Platylithophycus that are only known from partial remains and so their body shape is unknown. But with the discovery of Aquila lamna, some scientists think these unknown fish may be Aquila lamnids. And if they were related to Aquila lamna, and if they had similarly proportioned bodies, they could have grown to around 4 meters or longer. However, better preserved fossils of these fishes will be needed to confirm the link. So Aquila lamna could have been larger, but even these larger size estimates would have still put them at the much smaller end of filter feeding animals, even during the Cretaceous period, as there was also the Pachycormidae, that were a family of very large bony fish that towards the end of the Jurassic, some members had evolved into giant filter feeders that lived throughout the Cretaceous. The largest among them being Lead Sixthes, that was the largest bony fish known to have ever lived, that grew to at least 14 meters long, which is about the size of a humpback whale. However, some size estimates put them at being considerably larger than this. Aquila lamna probably filled a similar niche to manta rays, and large Pachycormidae probably filled a similar niche to whales. Manta rays first evolved about 20 million years ago, and interestingly, most modern filter feeding animals all appear in the fossil record around this time. Both basking sharks and whale sharks evolved between 20 to 30 million years ago. And also baleen whales not only evolved around this time, but their populations exploded. At this time, Antarctica was moving further and further away from South America and Africa, making it much easier for ocean currents to circulate around Antarctica, which cooled the Earth's oceans. Krill grow faster in colder temperatures, which encouraged the evolution of lots of new filter feeding animals to take advantage of this new food source. Aquila lamna and the other Cretaceous filter feeders show that these new filter feeding animals weren't actually new, and it was more like they were making a comeback from the Cretaceous period. Cretaceous filter feeding animals disappeared from the fossil record towards the end of the period, most likely following a decline in plankton populations brought about by ocean acidification from the asteroid that caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. It's amazing that a fossil that was only discovered 10 years ago and described a few weeks ago would be of such an extraordinarily strange creature not known to science before. Which makes you think what other strange animals are out there waiting to be found. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.